I found it really helpful being around doctors. They were very encouraging um, when I told them, sort of confessed to them that actually I wanted to be a doctor in the first place and not a pharmacist. They were very encouraging for me to go back to medical school. Hi, my name's Dave Larkin. I'm a third year medical student at Warwick Medical School. Um, before I came here, I um, studied a, an M-Farm degree at Liverpool John Moores and I worked as a pharmacist for four years before starting. Once I'd finished my pharmacy degree um, in 2010, I did a pre-registration year, um, as all pharmacists have to do, in a, a hospital up in Liverpool, um, which was really, really good experience, getting you straight into hospital um, and, and seeing how things work clinically. After that, I locumed for about 18 months. Um, so I did a mixture of community pharmacy work and I was lucky enough to be able to actually get a taste of what it's like to work in pharmacy industry, um, sort of doing pharmaceutical aseptics on, a, on an industrial scale and shipping out um, aseptic products all over the country. Um, that was a, a really cool job. Um, I'm really glad I got the chance to, to have a go of that. Um, once that locum contract sort of started winding up though, I, um, I went back to the NHS and I worked in a, a hospital for about two and a half years-ish. There's some overlap between these if someone's adding up all the, the times, um, like I worked in one and then another one at the same time. Um, so I did that for about two and a half years-ish um, as a, a rotational hospital pharmacist. Um, and then when I got accepted to medical school towards the end of that, I went back to locuming again, but this time in um, in hospital pharmacy. So I was a, an aseptic um, chemotherapy locum pharmacist thing um, at a local children's hospital for probably about four or five months um, and then started at Warwick. When I finished my M-Farm degree, I was 23, um, I think, um, which means that after I'd done my pre-registration year, um, which is a compulsory part of pharmacist training, I was 24. So at 24, I was a fully registered pharmacist and out in the world. Um, I was 29 when I started medical school, so I had a few years in between of, of working. Everyone always asked me why um, I wanted to change career. The truth is, I, I suppose I never really wanted to be a pharmacist. Um, when I applied for med school the first time, you know, back in the 1800s, um, when I was 18, I didn't get in. My A-level grades just, they weren't any good. Um, the next year I started applying to some other healthcare related degrees um, because I'd, I'd sort of thought, well, I need to be pragmatic about this. And uh, I got an unconditional offer for pharmacy. So I took it and I thought, this will do. Um, after, as I got into my pre-edge year and I came out of the, the degree, I was really enthusiastic to be a pharmacist. When I got into um, hospital practice and I was working with doctors on a day-to-day -day basis, I found the longer I stayed there, I was just thinking, I wish I was doing what you were doing and not sat here doing what I was doing. Um, and eventually I just decided I had to go for it. I mean, I still don't know whether medicine's the right thing for me, but no one knows whether it's the right thing to me uh, or for them until they've qualified and had a cover of it. So that's my gamble. Were you worried leaving a full-time stable career to go back to education? I suppose, yeah, I suppose I did. I didn't worry about it a lot. Um, I, with all the locuming I'd done, I knew I had some savings, so things were going to be okay. Um, you know, it's it's about saving properly and, and financially. And I'm lucky as a pharmacist, if I decide tomorrow, med school's not for me and jack it in, with a little bit of CPD and an extra admin fee, I can be a pharmacist again. Um, so. I've not left that stable career, it's still there, it's just kind of on hold. I think the longer you are away, the more proof that you've been keeping up to date, you have to submit along with your, your fee, but I've been at medical school, I've been learning all about drugs and diseases and stuff, I'd say I'm pretty up to date with things and, um, and I can submit plenty of evidence to show. So it's, it's worth thinking about that. like when you, you know, if, if people watching this are worrying about like, oh, do I want to leave a stable career? Well, if you're a pharmacist, you can pretty much go back to it. Um, and as I mentioned before, like some of the students stay registered with the GPHC all the way up until they, um, until they qualify and register with the GMC. And then I imagine they probably drop it. Do I think being clinical practice from the beginning is, is, is useful? I mean, that's one of the big selling points of Warwick, isn't it? It's like, as soon as you start, you're out there in clinical practice 
for me as a hospital pharmacist coming in I didn't find it particularly useful from a learning point of view but I think that's probably because whenever I was um, sort of learning about things um, in university I would think back to cases I'd seen on the medical admissions unit as a pharmacist already um, I did think that being exposed to patients and um, and sort of clinical practice from the start was a good thing for OSCEs and um, taking histories and performing examinations which is something well the histories aren't but the examinations were completely new to me that took a, a lot of getting used to and being there and doing it on actual patients um, under the supervision of a doctor from day one was really helpful so my favorite part of the Warwick course so far I, I think has got to be um, it's part of first year, it's the clinical anatomy. Um, I don't know whether it's because it's something that was so new to me, it's something I hadn't touched on as a pharmacist. Um, I just found it really interesting and seeing them, uh, the plastinates and everything preserved really, really well on a week in, week out basis and sort of getting that teaching there with, with essential actual bodies. Um, I found that really interesting, really engaging. It was certainly my favorite part of first year even if it wasn't my strongest part of first year, I, I did enjoy it. So Dave, you've actually been through the first two years of the course. Which has been your favourite, year one or year two? They, they differ an awful lot. Um, first year, it's almost like you're doing a science degree with a little bit of practical medicine on it. it it's your preclinical year, so you learn all the things, the foundation for your sort of clinical knowledge, whereas second year is the start of your clinical years and you're in hospital every day, um, you're seeing patients, you're interacting and you're being taught by actual doctors. So they are very, very different. I prefer second year um, to first year. Uh, they're both hard, they're both tough, there's a lot to take in on both of them. But I think with my past experience and just my way of learning, I, I get a lot more out of being able to sort of put almost faces to conditions um, and sort of have a practical, um, real world basis for the knowledge about diseases and stuff that I'm learning about. Um, so that's really helped in second year, whereas that was a little bit lacking in first year. What's the single most important lesson you've taken away from your time as a pharmacist? That's a horrible question, Ollie. I wasn't ready for that one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult because, like, actually, a lot of the things that I learn are pharmacology things from my degree. It's just, I suppose, as a pharmacist in a hospital, you're almost a reference source for the doctors. So I needed to know a lot of the management, um, like long term and short term, for lots of different conditions. I might not understand how you diagnose that condition, but I knew what you did after that. Um, and that's really, that's, that's been really handy at medical school and I imagine it'll be really handy when I go forward. But that's not really like a one thing that I've learnt. Um, I could say like the style of learning I had to do at, in hospital is quite similar to Warwick because it was very clinically focused and, you know, coming up with ideas or like, you know, thinking back to cases that you've done. Um, and then applying your sort of um, academic knowledge to that is very much how Warwick styles things with case-based learning and with exposure to patients and things to try and make it more real. And getting a head start on that was, um, was really useful. I suppose the other thing would be, and it's really corny, but like, you know, having worked in a, an environment like that, you realize that you can't catch everything um, and you will make mistakes and actually you'll beat yourself up over it, but when you make mistakes, it's not the end of the world and you're only human. And that's gonna be really helpful. Have you had much opportunity to work as a pharmacist during the medical course? Um, I, I didn't, because I came off the pharmacy register in my first year, so I haven't worked. Um, I know there are a bunch of other pharmacists in my previous year, um, and a couple of them are locoming. Um, I'd say in terms of working and, and jobs and stuff, the first year is not a good time to do it. It's a very, very intense year. Um, there's more scope for it in second year. I think the guys did a lot more work in second year. And there is locum work around here as a pharmacist, if you, if you know who to ask. What would you say to those pharmacists out there thinking about applying to medicine? 
advice for pharmacists applying for medical school. Be 100% sure that it's 110% sure it's definitely what you want. Graduate entry medical school is not easy. Um, I had a lot of people tell me that an M farm is basically the same level as medical school and you'll be fine if you got through that. It's, it's not true. Medical school is really hard. Um, and also you've got to think about it financially. I know money's not everything, but if you're doing a four year course or, or even a five year course, if you're applying as a, as a graduate, it's, it's going to be 50,000 pounds worth of, of student debt on top of what you've already got from a four year course. Plus you've got less scope for earnings. You might be able to do a bit of locum work on the side, but you're basically all of your out, it's, everything's outgoing. So you've got no money coming in for four or five years and it's a big financial burden. Um, but that being said, if you are sure, like I was, that medicine is for you and you've got to, you've got to try it and you've got to be there, you should definitely pursue it. Definitely. Um, and just that, that old cliche of chase your dreams. Um, it really just, just do it and have a go. And at least you can say, even if you're unsuccessful, that you tried and you went for it. Applying for medical school, it's, it's really not easy. Not everyone gets in on their first attempt. I mean, I applied multiple times. I think if you count up everything from when I first started applying for medical school after deciding I wanted to be a doctor at 17 doing my A-levels, all the way through all my sort of post-grad applications, it wasn't until the seventh time that it actually stuck and I was successful um, with my application to Warwick. So it's worth keeping on going and being persistent. It, it can be really demoralizing if you get multiple attempts that end in failure. I know you've just got to be sure that you want to do it and if you know deep down that that's what you want to do you'll keep going. I found it really helpful being around doctors um, in in hospital. They were very encouraging um, when I told them, sort of confessed to them that actually I wanted to be a doctor in the first place and not a pharmacist. They were very encouraging for me to go back to medical school. Um, I got some really good references from consultants that I worked with for my med school applications, which was great. Um, but seeing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it just reminds you every day that that's what you want to do and that's what you should be doing. In, like You feel like you should be doing and that's what kept me going through years and years of unsuccessful attempts. Has your experience working as a pharmacist in hospital changed how you interact with junior doctors? <laughs> well, I'm very tempted to go back into, um, into hospital as a junior doctor and be an asshole to everyone because that's basically a lot of my experience of junior doctors. But I won't do that. I'll be nice. Um, I think it has. Like, one of my favourite bits of my job, um, one of the things that kept me going and back in for so long into hospital was being involved in patient care and being asked for advice and opinions by the doctors that I was working with. I'd quite happily ask a pharmacist for advice. Um, and, you know, if I can bring that sort of, like, inclusion to them that I so liked when I was a pharmacist, that would be a bonus. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of asking pharmacists for advice if you're a junior doctor. Um, I like to think they're good. They're great. <laughs> Do you feel that your MPharm degree prepared you for the demands of the Warwick Grad Entry Medicine course? Mm, it's, it's difficult because the only thing that can prepare you for Grad Entry Medicine at Warwick is the Grad Entry course at Warwick. Like, no one, no matter their background, whether it's biomed, pharmacy, like you know social sciences things like that everyone hits first year and just falls down it's so horrible it's there's so much stuff to learn and no matter what you've studied before there's going to be stuff that's alien to you that you've never come across before um, because it's so broad um, that being said like the m farm i mean it certainly helped me with pharmacology <laughs> um which was great um and, and sort of being able to interact with patients. Although I found anatomy was very difficult. That's completely new and alien to me. As was, weirdly enough, touching patients. It took a lot to get over the fact that I was going to examine people and that required me to put my hands on them. Because as a pharmacist, you're very much kind of, you walk into a patient's room. Hi, my name's Dave, I'm a pharmacist. Can I ask you some questions? And you'd never have any physical contact with anyone. Um, so it was really difficult to get over that as a, a you know as a, a, a medical student, even though that's an important part of being a doctor. Um, 
physiology is a bit different. So my M Farm course certainly, we did physiology, but we did enough physiology to understand how the drugs work. And it was very much limited to that. Whereas at medical school, you learn all of it because that might be how the drugs work, but then this other bit that might be really important for how a disease happens. So you need to understand that as well. So there was a lot more physiology to take on board. Pharmacology was fine. But yeah, the, it has prepared me in some ways, but don't expect to walk on to the course and be like, I know everything because I'm a pharmacist, because you won't. When would be the best time for someone studying a pharmacy degree to apply to medical school? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. I mean, I've, I've only got personal experience of waiting and working for a few years before you go back. But there are pros and cons to applying at every stage. So, for example, if you were to, as soon as you finish your M-Pharm degree, you finished your four years, you qualified, start medical school, um, would actually probably be pretty good because you're still in the studying mindset. You're still used to going and like smashing out 14 hour days in the library um, from finals and that'd be really handy in med school. I suppose your con though is you're not registered with the GPHC. So if you wanted to do some work, um, you, you couldn't do it as a pharmacist. Um, so you've got to kind of weigh up the financial versus that. Um, if you were to do it straight after your pre-reg, that's probably on balance the best time um, because it gives you the option of locuming but your sort of study skills and stuff are still relatively fresh um, and you will have had some experience of learning sort of in a clinical environment whether that be in community or in hospital whichever with those two pre-regs that you ended up doing um, that that stand you in really good stead I think or you could do what I did and wait a few years um, I found it quite a culture shock going back to studying full-time from working full-time. Um, it, it's been very difficult to get back into the groove of doing revision um, and sort of reading over notes and stuff. But, um, you know, I did work for a few years. I've got like real-world experience, which has been really helpful in uh, case-based learning um, things throughout the, the course. And um, I can still locum. Well, I could still locum theoretically if I wanted to. Um, and I was able to save a little pot of money before I came to medical school um, to deal with the um, the initial outlay fees for first year and have some money for, for spending money and, and to sort of support myself through the first year of university. Every, every time to apply as a pharmacist has got its pros and cons. I'd say probably sooner after your pre-reg is better, but there's no reason you can do it immediately before your pre-reg or even wait a few years like I did. So thanks very much for, for watching everyone. I, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you have any further questions, um, send Ollie an email or a, a direct message or, or whatever and he'll pass them on to me and I'll try and get an answer for you. Okay? And uh, don't forget to hit that like button. I, I just wanted everyone to know like, it's a big switch um, to leave a career like pharmacy behind, although as we've mentioned, it's it's still there if you want it. But it is it's a big change to go from something like that to going back to studying and going back to medical school. But it can be done. Okay, um, there are plenty of people at Warwick who were pharmacists before, and they're now back here studying medicine with us. So yeah, just don't be put off. Don't let it put you off. Um, and if you want to do it, chase it. Uh, best of luck with your applications, everyone.